everyone and welcome back to another true crime news video. If you are new and enjoy listening or watching this type of content, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button to support the channel. I do my very best to upload a new video every single week with one week being a shorter current true crime news segment and then the following week I cover and deep dive on a true crime case making the victim of the case as always as the main focus and to also spread awareness for these cases. As you can tell by the name of this video, I am going to be talking about the currently missing 15 year old Sebastian Rogers. If you haven't at least heard about this case, I would be completely shocked because since Sebastian has been reported missing, his face has been shown everywhere on social media and on news outlets, as it should for all missing persons cases in my opinion. In a perfect world, every single person who goes missing, their story, their poster would go viral. But we all know that this isn't a perfect world never will be, and not every case gets the type of coverage that it deserves. I really actually wanted to talk about Sebastian for my first true crime news video, but I decided to hold off because I was so sure that Sebastian was going to be found. From the amount of people who have shared his face online, and the amount of news coverage he has gotten from the media in general, and the amount of people who have been involved in search parties for him, I was 100% convinced that Sebastian would have been found by now. Whether, fingers crossed, of course he would be found safe or if he would be found deceased, I didn't and still don't know. But here we are, two months later as I'm recording this audio, and there has still been no trace of Sebastian Rogers whatsoever. There are no leads to where he is or where he might be, and the active searches for him are now decreasing by the day. Like any single decent human being would, I had continued to hope for the best possible result that Sebastian will be found alive and unharmed but as each day passes, I, along with many others, are becoming less and less hopeful of that outcome. So in the last minute when I was deciding which topic to cover for true crime news this week, my heart gravitated to Sebastian Rogers. If you follow me on Twitter slash X, yes, that is now what I have come to call it, don't judge me. I have posted or reposted about Sebastian a few times since he has been reported missing, and I've continued to search for updates every single day just wishing that when I search his name online, I would see an article that he has been found. But instead, I see different rumors and allegations that at this point don't have any real definitive evidence so far, but of course that could change any second now. So let me go ahead and briefly go over the events of Sebastian Rogers' case for those of you who are not as familiar. On February 26th, 2024, in Hendersonville, Tennessee, 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers was reported missing by his mother and stepfather Katie and Chris Proudfoot. The details as to which one of them specifically called and reported him missing has changed a couple of times, but currently Katie and Chris claim that they had both made a three-way call to police to report him missing. According to Katie, the day before Sebastian disappeared was a normal day. The family had had a busy weekend. They went out on Sunday, February 25th, and they returned back home during the early evening hours. She states that Sebastian was playing in his room for a while, nothing out of the ordinary. Then at around 9 p.m., Katie claims she told Sebastian it was time to go to sleep. He told her goodnight and that he loved her. He kissed his dogs goodnight and presumably went to bed. A couple of hours later, Katie says that she heard noises coming from Sebastian's room and she called out to him and told him to go back to sleep, but she did not get up to go check on him. Katie says she fell asleep at around midnight and at 6 a.m. she woke up as usual and went to go wake up Sebastian for school, but he was not in his bed. She claims she spent a couple of minutes looking around the house, and when she could not find him, she immediately called her husband Chris, who was out of town at work, and she told him that she could not find Sebastian anywhere. That's when the two decided to contact the police and report Sebastian as missing. It's been heavily reported that Sebastian had left his house barefoot with only a flashlight in the middle of the night. He didn't take any money or anything with him except apparently this flashlight, according to his mother. Now, a big factor of this case is that Sebastian Rogers is autistic. Where exactly Sebastian falls on the spectrum, we still don't know exactly, but it's fairly clear that Sebastian is very high functioning. The fact that he is autistic does play a major role, in my opinion. Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers, has been extremely outspoken since Sebastian has disappeared. I have watched 
a lot of interviews with Sebastian's parents, and Seth has dropped everything to search for his son. He has taken off work, and he has been involved in most, if not all, of the search parties looking for his son. Seth has been in so many interviews talking about Sebastian, what he was like, what he would or would never do, and you can just tell how devastated he is and how emotionally draining this has all been for him. Seth was also at work several miles away when Sebastian was reported missing, so the only adult who was in proximity of Sebastian around the time he had disappeared was his mother Katie. Chris and Katie Proudfoot have pretty much demonstrated the exact opposite reaction than Seth. It has been reported that they have not been involved in really any search parties. They didn't even give any type of interview speaking about Sebastian until he had already been missing for eight entire days. I will link Katie and Chris's interviews in the description below so you all can develop your own opinion on these interviews. Don't just take my word for it. I've had to have watched them all at least five or six times now, and I'm not getting good, genuinely concerned vibes from either Katie or Chris. When they talk, I notice they look at each other a lot, as if they are looking for approval, and Katie specifically seems so disassociated. She stares out into space. She looks so disconnected as to what is going on. Obviously, you can look at it a couple of different ways. You could see her as a mother who has been traumatized by the fact that her son is missing, or you could look at her with suspicious eyes. Most people who follow this case are choosing the latter. The night Sebastian disappeared, there is surveillance footage from one of the houses near the home of the Proudfoots that did pick up activity at approximately 3 a.m. The only thing this footage picked up were a couple of lights. This video went viral. If you follow this case, I'm sure you have seen it. Apparently, this footage was later debunked, and it came out that this was just a garbage truck's lights, which doesn't make any sense to me, and maybe I'm just an idiot, but does anyone live in an area where their garbage truck comes through their neighborhood that early in the morning? If so, please comment down below because I know the garbage truck that picks up the trash in my neighborhood is so loud, and if they came through at 3 o'clock in the morning, I would be so pissed. I don't know, this being a garbage truck, that just doesn't make much sense to me, and there is no other activity captured in the neighborhood until later in the morning when the police show up after Sebastian was reported missing. So if Sebastian left on his own free will, when else would he have had the opportunity to leave the house? This entire case has so much more questions than answers, it's beyond frustrating. The search for Sebastian has been extensive to say the least, Thousands of people have been involved in these searches. They have broken out helicopters, scent dogs, ATVs, you name it. Investigators have completed several water searches in the ponds and in the retention ponds of the surrounding area. Hundreds of miles have been searched and there's been no sign of this 15-year-old kid. It's beyond baffling. You hear about past cases of people just disappearing into thin air without a trace from 15, 20 plus years ago, and you don't expect something like this to happen in present day in 2024. And yet, here we are. It seems like Seth Katie and Chris clearly have a tumultuous relationship. As I've said, Seth has been very vocal. He has stated that Sebastian told him on several different occasions that he did not want to continue to live with his mother and stepfather. Seth says he has asked Sebastian why he didn't want to live with them and he refused to answer. He also alleged that there have been a few past incidents where he claims Katie was not properly watching Sebastian. He revealed in one of his interviews that when Sebastian was seven or eight years old, Katie and Chris had allowed a 13-year-old boy into their home and to play with Sebastian. Seth stated Katie was not checking in on their son and this boy, and as a result, this older boy allegedly molested Sebastian. Again, these are allegations made from Seth we don't have concrete proof of this incident. Katie and Seth are obviously divorced. It's not uncommon for a divorced couple to take shots at each other. But what honestly bothers me is how apparently different Seth and Katie and Chris are dealing with Sebastian Rogers being missing. Once the rumor mill started, allegedly the public began harassing Katie and Chris. Death threats were being said to them, and a lot of people have been insinuating that they had something to do with Sebastian's disappearance. So instead of looking for their missing son, who they say they adore, which should be priority number one, I don't give a damn. If you are a parent who loves their child and they go missing, you would be nonstop looking for them. 
Seth is. He's leading a lot of searches for Sebastian, but not Katie and Chris. As soon as it got tough, they left Hendersonville altogether. Chris claims he had to go somewhere for his job, and Katie stated she decided to go with her husband. That's very odd. I'm not a mother, but I know that if my baby was missing, I would be searching all day and all night. Nothing would stop me from searching until I found my child. I'm not saying Katie or Chris had something to do with Sebastian's disappearance. There is no current evidence of foul play. There's no evidence of anything at this point. All scenarios, as far as I am and the rest of society is concerned, are wide open. Investigators have not been able to rule anything out. Did Sebastian voluntarily leave that night and run away barefoot? According to Seth, he would never do something like that, but we don't know. Did someone kidnap Sebastian? Did someone he know kill him and then dispose of his body? <laughs> Did aliens abduct Sebastian? I mean, seriously, investigators can't rule out one scenario, and I have seen so many possibilities being talked about online. Anything is possible with this case since nothing can be ruled out. As of right now, Seth Rogers is hiring a private investigator, and Seth has also started a petition to have the FBI take over his son's case. I will link the petition down in the description box as well if anyone wants to sign the petition. I hope the FBI completely takes over this case and that Sebastian Rogers is found. After two months of being gone, he could literally be anywhere at this point. Continue to share Sebastian's case. I pray that one day I can make an update video that he has been found. But that is all I have for today. I will catch you all next week with a new unsolved true crime case. But until then, bye guys.